test or check? I'm pretty nervous, so I want to see some red cards. <laughs> Can you please help me? Few red cards. 177202179070131. Thank you. 126 Fiona Charles. Thank you. It so happens that many a times we start a session, a talk, and we don't have time to thank people. To thank those who made it possible. So I thought, let's get that first. Let's thank people. Let's thank those who made it possible. So to start with, thank you. Thank you, and thank you. It's a dream come true to be here. It's a 17 years old dream. So before we move on to discuss about the future of testing is here, I'll begin again by thanking a few more people. Thanks to Pete and Matt Heuser. I received an email, it was morning India time. Received an email, will you be interested to do a keynote? We found your talk at Agile Testing Days, interesting, engaging. Will you be interested to do a keynote? Are you okay? I read it more than once. Okay, double okay, <laughs> right? So thanks a lot, Pete, Matt, thank you for your support. For the belief that even I can deliver a keynote. Yesterday's keynote speaker, Karen Johnson, her experience, 30 years, is my age. So I'm proud, I'm happy to share the stage. Thank you. The picture on the right is from my wedding album. Uh, thanks to my parents. Who continue to support my dreams. My sisters, twin sisters, who tolerate me, <laughs> and my latest partner in crime, my wife, thanks a lot. Then there is this group picture, is the team, the platform QA team, who make it an interesting learning experience every day, so thanks a lot. Weekend testing. I step into my 10th year of software testing and weekend testing has, or rather, celebrated its sixth birthday on August 1st. So what would have happened to me without weekend testing? I'm not sure. Thanks a lot to everyone who supports weekend testing, who supported weekend testing, who spread the news about weekend testing. We'll talk about it. AST for educating me. BBST courses, cast conferences, live streaming, thank you. ISST, International Society for Software Testing. Thank you for believing in me and having me on board as a, one of the founding members. Step in forum for giving me opportunity to try out my ideas like hands-on training testing, 
over Skype, conducting a monthly contest for testers, for taking care of all the administrative work. Thank you. Test Insane, the startup which won the best startup in India last month. Santosh Tupat for contributing to the community and involving me. Thank you. I believe that time is precious and thanks for giving me part of your life by being here. So I give you the option to continue to spend your time here or do something which is valuable for you. So this is the sneak preview of the keynote. <laughs> I don't want people to spend an hour and then say, ah, I wasted my time. No, our interests might differ. You might already know some of these. You might not need these. You might do this better than me. So if you think you don't want to waste your time, let me just give you a brief in two minutes what I'll talk about and then I don't mind if you leave. One, two, three exits. Right? So to start with, I will talk about the learning opportunities for the testers. How did you learn? How did I learn? What are the current opportunities for the testers? And what is our role in helping the testers learn? And before I move forward, I want to thank uh, Dhanashekar there. He was there when I was first invited as a speaker in Bug Debug Conference. My first uh, invite, he was there. My first invite for a keynote, he's there. Thank you. So then I'll move on to a trend in who tests. We have had QA teams, we still have. Outsourcing, then it's crowdsourcing. Now it's all freelancers, something on that. Then about testing education. If this is the current generation, who are our next generation testers? And what is our contribution to them? And is it all smooth? Who are we fighting against? Who are we competing against? Then testing and other fields. Can we learn something from others? Can we learn something from other fields? Should we avoid something from other fields? Or is it like, oh, I read about this practice in this industry, let's apply it without understanding the context. What we should not do. Then the debate, the standards, the schools, I advocate for just two schools. I'll let you know what are those two schools are. Then my thoughts on the future. Who defines it? Future for whom? Right? So, 10 seconds time, you decide. Then don't blame me that you wasted one hour. Good. I see people entering the room, so thank you. <laughs> so let's start. I like this quote. Try to learn something about everything and everything about something. Think about it. We software testers, are expected to learn something about everything. Oh, you are the software tester. You must be knowing about it. You should know to set up. Hey, you should know to write some small scripts. 
You should know to test it. You should know to assure it. Hmm. Okay. So learning opportunities for the testers. I started my career in 2006, or rather I should say, I started getting paid for testing software from 2006. I did not know that there was something called a software testing. In the interview, the questions were on the lines of, do you know to develop? I said, no. OK. What do you like? I like quality. Oh, so you should be in testing. OK. What is quality? Uh, page number 45. Satisfying customers' expectations is quality. Oh, good. You are hired. For the next 15 days, I went through training. What is a test case, V model, spiral model, test plan, test strategy, bug reports, priority, severity. And after the training, I'm put on a project. I have more questions than answers. Why are we doing this? I don't know, but do this. Are you sure this is the only way to do this? I don't know, but do this. Hmm. I did some of this, used Google. That's how I learned, or I started to learn. Learn software testing, and, and, I, I, and I do see many software testers still doing this. How to learn software testing. Learn software testing in X days difference between open up Quora and you will see what is the difference between test case and test strategy I don't know but I need it for the interview I'm sorry I like Skype emoticons and uh, that's the head bang <laughs> so in the past this could be, or this was, the most prominent way of learning software testing. Search. How many of you have faced this? Yeah. I see Carol nodding. Welcome the new test, tester with test cases. Written by someone who has left the company, the project. Right? We don't trust the testers to learn. We believe that the test cases will replace or is uh, the final authority. I am not sad if this was the way, this was one of the learning opportunities for the testers, but if this continues, I am sad. I am angry. This should not continue. Why? I have some answers. How many of you are not aware of Ministry of Testing? Raise your hands. That's okay. It's okay to not know something, provided you will know it if it's important to know. Rosie Sherry, the owner of Software Testing Club, she helped me a lot. When I first started with software testing, $60 was the entry fee for uh, software testing club, I couldn't afford it, $60. There was a scholarship contest, and I was offered the scholarship. It was run by Matt and uh, Rosie. So thank you. The tagline is actually true. They are co-creating smarter testers. If I have the power 
to lead a team to take decisions on behalf of them. I would send my team members on paid vacation to go spend their time on Ministry of Testing. That website has a lot of resources. I would say go there, learn about at least one or two sections. Take your time, five days, 10 days, 15 days, come back, be the expert in that field. Study, devote your time for that section. Weekend testing. When it was started, I did not think that we would have so many reports, so many real reports by real testers performing testing. In weekend testing, Testers meet online on Skype for two hours. The first hour, we test software based on different missions. Could be find bugs. It could be watch a lecture on software testing and create notes. Uh, test this tool, right? Or the latest one where Michael Bolton was involved was prepare our testing model of this product. How will you test this product, right? And we have successfully completed more than 130 sessions in India alone. Weekend testing Americas, Michael Larson. We have weekend testing Europe, Marcus. Anna Bake, Amy Phillips, Neil Studd, thanks a lot. Now we have more than 200 reports, experience reports, or rather you can say the entire chat transcript is there on the website, weekendtesting.com. A tester could read two reports per day, and I think that will help them. That's a good learning opportunity. BBST testing course. At this moment, I am reminded of the quote or uh, quote by Robin Sharma. Before I tell that, I want to ask you a question. How many of you want to double your income? Right? Nice. He says, please listen carefully, to double your income, triple your learning. Oh. To double your income, triple your learning. And I can proudly say, it works. It works. So BBST testing course, how many of you have taken test design course? 12, 14. BBST bug advocacy course. 26, nice. Okay, you have another chance. <laughs> BBST foundations, nice. How many of you are BBST instructors? Eight, ten, cool. So go for it. It's again an investment in your learning. And I'm pretty sure it will change the way you think about software testing. And if you are someone who wants to try it out before taking the course, these videos are available online for free. I should not say for free. They are available because they need your time. Right? Go for it. Try it. And then the Skype rooms. Software delivery 24 by 7, Matt Heuser. Software testing 24 by 7, IST members. I'm not saying you learn every day about something, but you learn something. 
Everything will not, may not be related to software testing, but you'll know, you'll, you'll meet people. So that is uh, one good learning opportunity. Udemy, multiple courses. You name it, they have it. Free courses, 25% off, 75% off. Go for it. Coursera. And there are many more. Code Academy, right? And this software testing mind maps, this repository is by Test Insane. Santosh Tupur. And there are many more apps as well. Check out their website. And if you feel you have learned enough or you want to test yourself, participate in the testing World Cups. Imagine the whole world, one winner. Are you the best tester in the world? Are you the best tester in the continent? It's free, and you get uh, that's a good uh, recognition, amount, prize money. If software testing World Cup is not enough, you have war with bugs. One winner by Test Insane. Yes, that small button, that small link, get invited, go click there. Enter your email address. Take that next big step. You don't know your potential till you try it. The only limits we place on ourselves are the actual limits. You see these home end keys on the keypad, keyboard? I thought when I first saw them, and for two to three more years, if we are playing some video games and we are stuck, we don't know how to go to home, we had to press that. That was my understanding. When I was doing my college project, and the cursor was somewhere in between the sentence, and I had to bring it at the uh, start of the sentence. I used the arrow keys. I did not know. If I can come here and give a keynote, you definitely can. That's the message. There are some secrets. I'll let you know. Testing mnemonics. There's a whole page by Lynn Mickey. The list of all the testing mnemonics the community has contributed. The testers have contributed to the community. It's a one page list. Pick one per day. Pick one BBST video per day. Early morning, it's like nine minutes, 10 minutes. Think about it. Carol mentioned about these testing magazines yesterday. Testing circus, tea time with testers. It takes 45 minutes maximum to go through one issue. So if with these learning opportunities, which were not there when we started. Now answer the question, is the future bright? When people used to learn about software testing through search engines, and we did not have these resources, I was OK. But now with these resources, if we still go back and say, where are the learning opportunities for the testers? I'm sorry, you're in the wrong profession. Good, so we have the learning opportunities, but what next? What do we as a community do? 
Many of the testers are not aware of these. How many of you heard most of these terms, these websites, these links for the first time? Right? So go back, spread the news. There are already multiple learning opportunities. Who needs a title to lead? I don't think so. We don't need a title to lead. Help each other. Help someone who needs help. Help someone who doesn't know. Tell them about these resources you are leading. So as a community, let's lead. Let's share our stories, the experience reports. What does it take to write a blog post? The writer's block? No. Don't publish it. Write it. Don't publish it. What if people don't comment on your first blog post? That's OK. What if people have already told what you want to tell? That's OK. No one can replace you. Everyone else is already taken. Why do you want to live others' life? So share your story. Speak easy program, thanks a lot. That helps. Support each other. Work-life balance. Not everyone might have a great work-life balance. Support them. And of course, if you're ready, take Skype coaching. Spread the news about the learning opportunities for the testers. Now we have taken care of the learning opportunities for the testers. The future is bright. The future is here. We already have so many resources. Now let's see who, who needs testing or whom do you call for testing your software. I found this wonderful cartoon from Alan Richardson's blog, eviltester.com. The untold story of the test plan. You need testing, here are the test plans, here are the test, I don't know, uh, the test strategy, the models, the templates. And here is our QA team. Right? And, uh, oh, if we cannot hire, let's outsource and face the problems. So if we needed testing, uh, these were the most common things that came to mind. Call the testing team. Where are the documents? Where are the templates? But now, we have our new friends. Bug Wolf. 24 hours, you, you get your product tested. You, first level, I see Fiona is really? I'm like, the first level. If you don't have a testing team and you're releasing to the market, it's better to go to someone like uh, these companies. And they are real testers testing for these companies. Test Ninjas, again an initiative by Software Testing Club, Ministry of Testing. Test Leo. How many of you use Accompli, Inbox, Email, Client? No? One of the top ones, do you use good? One of the top ones in the list, if you search for the uh, uh, apps. And that was tested by Testlio. 
you test how many of you have not heard you test either you test with them or there is again a great amount of uh, learning resources bug finders 99 tests they are like more than 6000 testers lot of bugs already filed different contexts they have experienced that fiverr there are people who can help you with testing freelancer is again one such company and uh, just before i left india i received this message from my college mate hey ajay can i learn testing there are so many testing projects for freelancing how long would it take to learn testing and i replied i did not want to reject a potential tester i love to hook them in yeah come in come in and then i say it's hard are you ready <laughs> i don't want to say it's hard and push them away who knows we can always learn from folks new folks as we learn from the ones who are experienced so i said it just takes a week to know the terms priority severity test plan and stuff like that and a month's practice and you should be good to start testing a week is 7 days long a month is 30 days if someone is dedicated enough to spend to devote themselves for 30 days they must be serious enough and we should help them as a community we should help them James Buck, Michael Bolton, Fiona Charles, the experts, been there, done that. As I mentioned yesterday, I was surprised. I was happy. I was inspired. I am by Karen's keynote. Thirty years of professional experience, and I'm like, twenty hmm, more to go. so f- say 5 years back we knew of very few people who were going independent who were already independent but many have taken the next big step just look around they might be here do you see them Justin is sitting there. Matt is there. So, congratulations for taking the next big step, and all the best. The community looks forward for your support, and hopefully, many more will step up. Yes, and the good news: the list is growing. So, if we wanted testing. it's no longer just the qa teams the templates it's no longer the outsourcing independents consultants they are there to help us the community is there to help us i think we are good there too we can no longer complain oh i don't have a qa team yeah that's your choice but is my product ready for ready to ship you can check with them so we have taken care of the learning opportunities we have taken care or rather we have talked about who is what's the change in trend or what's the trend in who tests now let's talk about where are our next generation testing testers coming from the colleges they are definitely not here because okay uh, so what's that perfect so these the these current courses which i mentioned there thank you 
it helps when you have people saying, yeah, I did that. It works. Does it work? It does, is the answer. So software testing in colleges. Dr. Kem Kainer, he teaches. Thank you. That's Rob. So they have taken care. They are teaching. They are making sure the next generation is ready for testing. And from Anne Marie Charrett's uh, blog, I saw this and I was happy. Enterprise software testing is being taught at Sydney. And there is SALT, School of Applied Learning in Testing, by Vipul Kocher and team in India. There's Purse Scholars. All good, but are we still, are we there, is the question. Is this good enough? Yes, it's this way. When I asked and I saw the gentleman there, and I agree, lots of work is pending, lots. 200 people attend CAST, 2 lakh people are attending colleges. And we might get 20,000 testers. Out of that 20,000, how, how many of them will understand what software testing, what is needed to become a good software tester? How do we bridge that gap? As I told, I thought quality is software testing, and I got in. Luckily, I got good mentors. So can you become the mentor? Can you become the person who takes in charge of helping someone who is stepping into software testing, who has lots of questions on software testing? As I told, I, I would repeat, lack of awareness. People are not aware. You go to Quora, you still find questions. Is manual testing going to die? What is my future in software testing? Should I learn programming? Should I learn automated testing? Should I be in the industry of software testing? I know only manual testing. I mean, that awareness is not there. It is we, as the community, should bring that awareness. The good news, the resources are already there. All we need to do is go back, spread it. One person, talk to one person, tell them about these resources, Tell them about how challenging, how beautiful software testing is. Present them a book on software testing. If each one of us did it to one person each, imagine, it's like the chain. Because we are competing with someone who has lots of money, lots of bad ideas, and want to fool people. Hey, software testing? Easy. Come join my five-day course, and you are a certified software tester. Certified what? I will get you a job in software testing. Come join this one-day course. Oh, I can teach you software testing in like 18 hours? $50, and you'll be a good software tester. Really? What are we doing here? Spending years learning the craft, and, um, and someone is leading, or rather, it's not leading, it's misleading, misguiding the next generation, and we keep quiet. 
and then we say, where is the future of software testing? There will not be special people coming from heaven and helping the community. It is we who have to help each other. Thank those who helped us. Now it's time we help those who need our help. Because we are competing with someone real bad. Their focus is on money, not on skills. So this is by Herb Scoots, spread the news. And if they don't want to listen, if they don't want to read a lot, just send one, one blog post. Testers get out of quality assurance business. That one should be good enough to start with. This is again about the different industries. I believe if someone can think well, they can become a good tester. So invest in stuff that helps you think well, think better, think critically. Helps you think. I like this book, How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes. And the Fish Tales, the series of books. So the learning opportunities, we are good there. There are lots of learning opportunities. The testers, we are good there. We have independence. We no longer rely only on the QA teams, the outsource teams. The future of testing, rather software testing in colleges, we are not yet there, but we can. We will. So what can testing learn from other fields? Why repeat the same mistakes which other fields have done? Why not learn from them? Do we really need to, as they say, reinvent or reinvent the wheel or what's that? Scientists, Fiona's tutorial, I was amazed. We were in, on the team talking about spacecraft, simulator for spacecraft, and I'm like, and I thought what I did was tough. So different contexts. Investigation, crime scenes. Okay, some less serious stuff. You like Facebook? You like playing games on Facebook? There is this criminal case game. Play it. Anything which improves your thinking, I encourage. Please go for it. Pilots. Even when I was checking this image, I was like, there should be at least 60 buttons. By mistake, the wrong button is pressed, turned. What would happen? How do they deal with complexity? How do software testers deal with complexity? Can we learn from them? How are they training their next generation. Can we pick some lessons from them? Doctors. Again, yesterday's uh, workshop, I heard uh, um, Anne say, I'm a labor nurse. And my job is to deliver. And I'm like, hmm, that must be tough. In the split second, what decision do you take? How do you think without thinking? That's the essence of Blink, the book.
do we want to learn from other fields or stay in software testing, isolated environment? Think about it. Nine out of ten times, whenever Michael Bolton gives a talk, he would mention this, how to think about science, the CBC radio series, try it, the book, the blink, and this book is really good, how doctors think how a particular patient had a problem and she had visited multiple doctors, had undergone multiple tests, but this doctor, this good doctor, was just asking questions, questions, questions. No tests, just questions. Spent days asking questions and then diagnosed the right problem. As testers, don't we need to ask questions? Can we learn from them? Imagine you are, giving, you are given a project and all you do is, oh, question number one, question number two, question number 100, question number 800, question number 850. That doesn't work. So if doctors also ask questions and get to the root cause of the problem, as testers, we also need to get to the root cause of the bug by asking questions, but, by, but with a limited set of questions. How do we do that? How do we train ourselves? So learning from different fields, I think we should be more aware and start practicing. Then I want to talk about standards in schools, the latest standard. ISO 29119. I don't want to talk much about it other than I'll tell you what I did. I went to Google. I put ISO 29119 and out of the search results, the ones in green are the ones that talk in favor of it. And the red ones are like, stop. And even in the wiki article, at the bottom, we have a strong opposition, two lines, we oppose. So this is what we need to do as a community. If it affects in a bad way, oppose it. Most of the times, it's not because of the bad people that we are in a bad state, but it's because the good people are silent. How can, how can you standardize thing, I mean, testing? Standardize thinking. I got two and a half ideas. Oh, you got just one idea? Bad. You got five ideas, you must be better than me? Really? If you still don't understand, Replace the word idea with kiss and you'll understand. Regarding schools of software testing, my view is I categorize or rather I like to have only two schools of software testing. One that thinks skills are important and the, one, and the other one which says I don't care. There's a lot written about the schools of testing. There's a lot of debate. If you're interested, please go through them. But for me, it's the school which encourages skills, the school which encourages um, practicing the skills, getting better at it, versus the schools where I don't care. You're yet another software tester for me. Unfortunately, we are in the minority. But I have hopes, I have dreams, 
and I'm pretty sure one day this will change. We talk about the future, we think about the past, but what do we do about the present? What you do now will be your past, will impact your future. So think about it. I want to do a very small exercise. Turn to your right, find the person, testers listen to instructions fully. Turn to your right, <laughs> so meet the person there. So find a person, shake hands and say, your dreams will come true. No, seriously. Thank you. So before I leave, I see nine minutes left for me to talk. So before I leave, as I told, your dreams will come true. The future is here because you create your future. I'll be very unhappy if you say, my employer doesn't send me to conferences. My employer doesn't pay me for these courses. You work for your employer, but your learning is in your hands. Hard work and skills is the secret. 1998, when I was in ninth grade, I gave a speech at a national level English elocution and I got third prize. Missed the first prize by one and a half points, missed the second by half a point. And I came back to my father and said, cluster is done, regional is done, national is done. I want to do an international soon. And it took 17 years to be here. Thank you. If I can, anyone else can. Just remember the second point. Hard work and skills is the secret. There's nothing else. There is nothing else. You have money, you don't have money, doesn't matter. You work for XYZ company, you don't work for, doesn't matter. You are rejected by your dream company, you are selected by some other company, doesn't matter. You know a particular language, you don't know, doesn't matter. All it matters is what you say to yourself. I can do it. Yes, that's it. And work on it. In 2007, even I used Google to search for how to become the best software testing expert. Okay, I'm in software testing, now I want to be the expert. How to become the software testing expert? And I'm surprised surprised to see a video there already becoming testing software expert by James Buck hmm. and on one of the slides it said I know it's the third point reputation over money it was of a bigger font reputation over money work on your reputation James 
wherever you are i know you will listen to this i know my friends on twitter will help me pass this message reputation over money this works and the living proof of it i got mentioned on james uh, website my indian heroes feels good when you test published the list of top 20 people to follow on twitter we can testing and the founders names were there and one of the comment was why do we follow them what have they done have they written books have they presented conferences it was it 2007 whoever you are thank you for the comment i'll go back today and publish this link there yes i wrote some books it's free for download i got a mention in bach brothers legion of testing merit got the award first recipient thank you and at office best speaker award runner up peer recognition award winners in contest team award self initiative and ideation award ast thank you foundations bug advocacy test design the future is here you have already received the message that your dreams will come true take it seriously work on your dreams and they really come true thanks a lot again to each one of you for having me here for encouraging me with the red cards at the start and for giving a part of your life life for this keynote it matters a lot thanks a lot open season I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up top quick so I can see better. All right, no red cards. How about green cards? Have we got green cards? Oh, we got 160. Who else? Is that it? Oh, oh 145. All right, uh, Michael, you want to hit up 160? Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'll start with the red one. Maybe I'm already bored with this, but I'd like to add. excellent learning opportunities are testing meetups in your city or nearby that's it sorry sorry uh, can please repeat uh learning opportunities i saw slides that we can test in i am there uh going freelancing yes but i see now that all around the globe there are testing meetups right. general testing meetups agile testing and context driven testing join one participate in one speak at one suggest something this is a hands on live practice right thank you and my second one as a strong supporting comment uh, some of the recent uh, examples uh, one day i take my son to uh, his judo training and while hanging out with parents i see a guy who i used to work with and he is asking like well, how come now you're lead of test and practice lead and i'm still intermediate i want to become great strong testing expert and i'm saying uh, i heard that you got a 
rank of Tai Chi master. Tai Chi is a kind of this uh, discipline, also uh, not combat, but health oriented. So I'm asking, how long did it take you to become a master to get the right to train other people? He said, 10 years. I said, well, there you go. If you want to become master of testing, this is a mental martial art, you got to spend something around that time. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we had a same thread, or still? Yes, no? What, can you stand up, please? Yeah, hey, sure. Matt. So just to add to what Albert said, if this morning at Lean Coffee, a few people said, well, I'm running a testing meetup and I could use some help, or what do I do? AST has a grant program designed to give you money to help pay for the chicken wings or fly in a facilitator, speaker, or rent a boat. So just Google AST grant program, learn all about it. Maybe the boat might be a little sketchy, but, but payforyourmeetup.com meetup, or if it will help you with your PR, rent a boat. All right, we're running to the center of the room here for the same thread. Just on the uh, local meetup thing as well, there's a lot of support for that for AST. I run New York City Testers. One thing that we're mentioning is that all the local meetup groups, we can all kind of learn from each other to kind of move forward. So if you do run a local meetup group and kind of want to spitball some ideas, let's kind of figure out how we can kind of exchange ideas in the kind of best form. Um, right now, we're just kind of going to join everyone else's meetup so we can kind of see what people kind of post. So if you're on meetup.com, you're running a meetup group, uh, let's all join each other's stuff so we can kind of learn from each other. The other wonderful opportunity is, is peer conferences. Right. Um, start one or join one. There are lots of them around. Okay, do we have anything else on this thread? All right, we had a new thread, back corner. So I was just wondering, when you first started out on this journey, given that you were based in a different time zone to where a lot of this information was being spread, what did you find was your biggest impediment to learning this knowledge? My family asking me to go to sleep. Because <laughs> I would finish my office. It was, uh, I would leave home by 8, reach office by 9, leave office by 6, reach home by 7. And I'm up till 1 a.m. learning watching, reading about testing, and they would say, please, go sleep. So the time zone difference uh, actually matters, but it's up to you. Uh, no one would stop you if you apply a day's leave in a month. Don't tell them, just apply. And then spend that time learning. But it's a long journey. You'll have to take that first step someday, sometime. Why not it be now? Thank you. Okay, Michael, same thread? Yeah, I actually, on this thread, I, I want to make a mention of something, and Ajay is, uh, has covered a lot of ground with this, and you've heard weekend testing mentioned over and over again. What he did not mention, and I think deserves to be mentioned, is that for just about every single one of us that has launched a chapter of weekend testing and gotten it off the ground, the person who was the co-pilot to make sure that we did not crash and burn was Ajay. Weekend Testing America's first three missions were flown because Ajay was willing to stay up until the middle of the night to make sure that the back channel was handled. He would ask me questions, he would prompt me with things that I can do, things that would make it work better. And you know we're up to now 60, uh, events that we've done and everything else. Had it not been for that initial support, I don't know if it would still be there. And I know that the same goes for the European chapter and for the Australia and New Zealand chapter. Ajay has put a lot of time and emphasis into this. I know that there's others that are involved in it, but the fact that it's a worldwide phenomenon is because of you. I just wanted to make sure that people here know that. So. Thank you. But All right, Michael, we have a new thread all the way in the back corner. Uh, one, so please. one second. Oh, Without yes, the course. chapter facilitators, you being in India and saying, yeah, start a chapter, what can you do? 
So thanks a lot to all the chapter coordinators, Americas, Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and then you had the project Sherwood, Albert and Michael, thanks a lot. All right, new thread. Yeah. Uh, before the question, I'd just like to add a few points about the weekend testing. Uh, he was talking about the Michael Bolton uh, testing model. Even for my tutorial, I referred that particular transcript for the you know, modeling of uh, you know, mobile apps. So the question is, this is regarding the biggest fight that uh, this uh, school is uh, having against the other uh, school, uh, the certificates. So how, how you handle that? For instance, uh, when I was forced to do a certificate, I quit the job. Right. When, when you were asked to take uh, up the certification? certificate in 2008 or 7, I quit the job. Okay. So that's how we know and we fight, but how do you, uh, you know, help other I mean, uh, innocent testers you know, to understand that? So how, how, how do you, uh, you know, make them to realize that and uh, you know, go get into the better school of uh, testing? Right. Um, it is very difficult. I'll admit it, it's very difficult, one versus thousand, but uh, you need to start and uh, go talk to them. I did, I told, uh, see, if you want to become good at something, you need to practice it. And how can you be good at something in like two hours? You write an exam and you're certified. Are you sure you want to believe that? Are you sure you want to be one out of the 15 lakhs or whatever claims they do? Why do you want yourself to be one of that big community where your name is not known? Instead, try this. People should know you by name. How is that? Not by your certification. Your name is your biggest certification. So work on your skills. One day you'll make it big. And this I want to mention. After every such conference, every such activity which makes me think hard, I want to restart my testing career. At Rapid Testing Intensive, it was intense learning for five days. And then I said, I think I'm restarting my career with all these lessons. Now at CAST, and I'm saying, I think I'll go back as a new tester, start again with all these experiences. It should be fun. Okay, same thread. Uh, I suggest a uh, slightly different angle, how I started approaching this uh, when people ask me uh, at the meetup I run and uh, at work. So I just ask, what you are hoping to get out of this uh, certification? Some say, well, it's a keyword I need to have it in my resume. I'm saying, well, put in your resume, I am much better than I stick to be certified. And you game all these automatic engines. And you draw attention of a person reading that because it's another question to ask you at the interview so you get a chance to show. Some, some others say, well, I want to learn. And I'm saying, well, you have a chance to exercise your short-term memory. Yes, you can learn to memorize and you can learn to forget it quickly. Is it, you think that it's your testing work? Uh, let's compare BBST where you have the same definitions, but you work with them live, you practice, you discuss with your peers, and you have hands-on testing. So that's better learning experience. Some others say, well, it's a kind of cheap way to get in there. And then again, you can say, well, actually it's expensive way because it's uh, like a scheme. You, you be become a foundation, then you have to go advanced, so they get you hooked. Instead, you can, again, take a BBST course. It's cheaper. You also, uh, for those who care about some paper to put uh, in the frame, you get uh, kind of a certificate from BBST. The authority of uh, AST organization versus authority of other certifications is uh, unmatched. So, I approach this from the like expanding, what you're hoping to get out of that? And maybe your expectations are not quite right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, same thread, David, do you still have something in the back? Run, Michael, run. 
Beautiful. Cheers. Uh, so on the same thread, but from a different angle, um, the companies and organizations that hire based on going over CVs and saying, oh, you've got that certification and that certification, we want you. What do you say to them? How, how do you convince them that that's not everything? Where is your online portfolio? Do you have that? Show it to them. Show live testing. Show how good you are at. Uh, and I want to mention this. The first company I got hired straight out of college and the next company they hired me on my reputation. So it works, but just that it takes some time. Just like all good things take some time. Okay, uh, new thread. Michael, right in front of you, black hat. Hey, Aj hey. Uh, Damien. Um, I have a suggestion and I want your opinion. Um, it's, there's a lot of cliches about know thine enemy and keep thine enemy close and understanding the opposition. Now, enemy's clearly not the right word for this. But in your pie chart, there was the folks that care and want to learn, and then the folks that don't care. Folks at this conference, um, the context-driven community generally care, and we're interested in learning. And those, it's a way of thinking, a way of doing. And we clearly want to, there, we want there to be more of us, more right. of that type of thinking. We want to influence that big 75% of the pie chart that don't care. I, my, my uh, path into and through testing was accidentally, I was one of the don't care. And then I had an awakening a few years ago, and now I'm a, a different person with a new way of thinking. Not everyone uh, had that journey. But um, what I'm getting at is, what is your opinion? I think it's, it's very valuable, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts about understanding the opposition. Understanding I, ISO 29119 in depth, detail. Understanding ISTQB. Learning about these opposing views so that we can better react to them and therefore help reach those people rather than just knowing your one point of view and saying, man, I really don't understand. I only know a little bit about what your point of view is. Maybe if we had deeper understanding, um, that's, it might That's help a us good point. Uh, Srini Kulkarni from India says the same all the time to me. Talk to the other side. Are you blinded uh, by your context, bias? Are you allowing the bias to creep in? Talk to the other side. Make more friends there because you already know something here. Talk to the other side. I'm not saying go, become part of it, but know what they are doing. I agree. Um, learn, don't react. Act, don't react. Reacting is, uh, I don't know, scary, it's bad for us to just act. I had uh, one person of uh, one uh, team starting up uh, online training with syllabus from the I don't care types and charging a good decent fee. And I said, this sucks. And they said, if this sucks, what have you got? And I was like, hmm, good point. <laughs> exactly. This is how uh, people responded. He has at least a syllabus. What do you have? Then I went back, spent two days. I created my own syllabus and I challenged him. I will do this training for free. I've done more than like 20 online, hands-on Skype training for software testers. I've tried different time zones, 10.30 to 12.30 night, morning 6 to 8. I've tried. Now I go face him and say, yeah, my syllabus, free, better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> now we are friends. He has changed the syllabus. So that's a moral victory. Okay, we have a couple new threads in the room. We have a couple threads that are similar uh, from Twitter. So let's go to the Twitter folks. Um, the first is uh, a tip for local meetups. Try adding a virtual option early and watch it grow. 
uh, just ask at clarification how it can grow. And then the second one, which is more about meetups, which I think uh, is good for you to feel. Um, what are the key characteristics and qualities that make for a strong meetup to improve the learning process for other testers? What are the key characteristics and qualities that make for a strong meetup to improve the learning process for other testers? Don't put pressure on them. Don't start with, oh, you don't know this? No. Welcome. Thank, for, thank them for coming. And engage them in a, some small exercise, not related to testing to start with. Get them feel comfortable. Know their names. Simple things like, oh, what's your name? Rather you say, oh, thank you, Prakash, for coming. That helps. And have good space. It shouldn't be like you have five chairs and 20 people coming in, and the first person who came in or came on time, he is feeling awkward. Oh, should I get up? This person looks like a software testing expert. Should I get up? No. Make them feel comfortable. And if they don't want to participate in a discussion, don't force them. Test Insane uh, has, I mean, Test Insane's founder. Santosh and I came up with this test maniac, testmaniac.com. We conduct one meetup every month, one workshop every month. And our meetups, we have five to 10 people attending. And we give them a small sheet of paper and say, what do you like to discuss about? As simple as that. Go to testmaniac.com, you'll find few, uh, you'll find a page about the latest meetup, just three questions. How good is your online presence? What can we do to improve? And stuff like that. Don't make it, do you understand this third degree of this particular theorem? They are already, they have already got that dose in the company. Make them comfortable here. Simple things like have some pizzas, beer. Make them feel comfortable and you will do good. Okay, we got a new thread in the room. Please stay. One, four, five, hello. Um, I would just like to emphasize one thing that took me a while to learn, and that is that everyone that is like your heroes, like AJ, like Michael Larson, James Buck, Michael Bolton, all these people, they're extremely approachable. The first time I asked a question to one of these people, I was, I was so afraid. I was expecting to be reacted for some reason, and I got a super clear answer. I got references. I got speak to this person, talk to this person. I got people contacting me with additional information, people I had not approached myself, thanks to this person. So just keep that in mind. They are not in any way, they might be intimidating because they're smart, but yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but really, they are extremely approachable, extremely helpful. Thank you. All right, we got about two more minutes. Chris Kenst. Hey, Ajay. Um, so I just wanted to hey, say Chris. that you had, uh, on the slides, you had put up a bunch of stuff like the BBST courses, your uh, completion certificates and that. So, and you've done weekend testing, you've done all this stuff. So how much has teaching, like coaching others, actually helped you in your learning journey? My wife says, you don't know how to teach. <laughs> because she understood that the only way to spend more time with me is to talk about testing. So she... <laughs> <laughs> I gave her lessons learned in software testing and I told, read. She's like, I don't want to read. You teach me. And when I tried, it's difficult. Every session, every Training session is different, difficult. You need to understand. Some people come with the perception, oh, you are the teacher? Let's test you out. And some come like, I'm nervous. And you're talking about so many things, right? Actually, talking to so many uh, folks who are interested in software testing has made me 
improve the way how I talk, the way how I write, and it helps. Uh, the barrier many times is the language. Most of the times it's the cost. So that's why I have it free. Free hands-on training on software testing and that blog post still gets many hits. So teach what you know, learn what you don't know. Just keep the cycle repeating and we'll do good as a community. Okay, with that, uh, we have to close. Uh, we're at time. Um, everyone, uh, please, let's give Ajay one more uh, round of applause. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thanks.